Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. And welcome today to an unboxing slash initial impression style video on one of the newer Seiko Speed Timer models. Now, I just bought this one. I picked it up for what I think is a pretty good price last week. However, as you may have spotted from the thumbnail today, I didn't pick it up because I thought it was gorgeous. You may recognize Sloth, the misshapen but lovable character from one of my favorite 80s movies, The Goonies. I think there are parallels between Sloth and the Seiko today because on the Seiko's dial, as with Sloth's face, everything is there, it's just not quite in the normal place. But in the movie, it wasn't Sloth's face that mattered, it was his heart of gold. So can I see past the Seiko's unusual dial layout and find its true purpose? Let's flip the camera and find out. All right, let's do it. You've seen these standard Seiko white cardboard boxes many, many times, I'm sure. I bought this one from an AD here in Australia. I got a three year warranty with it, therefore. I could have bought it from the Seiko boutique, obviously, and got a five year warranty. However, they would have wanted 1,350 Pacific pesos for the privilege. <sighs> I paid less than half of that. Don't pay retail for Seiko's folks. The two year warranty extension simply isn't worth it. As I said in the intro, I'm happy with the price I paid on this one. As always is the case with Seiko these days, hot new model, people FOMO in and pay retail for it, but don't do that. There really isn't much need because if you wait three, four, five, six months, it'll come down considerably. So the thumbnail says it all today. I went for the Panda variant. I think the Panda variant is the best looking of the variants. Yeah, okay, best looking. It's not an unattractive watch, it is just definitely an unusual watch, but is there some method to the madness? Is there some reason for this rather odd dial layout today? That's what we're here to find out, but first, let's peel off some stickers. Well, there we are after a lot of protective packaging. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to the Seiko Sloth Timer. It does have a bit of a ring to it, doesn't it? Now this is from Seiko's Prospects line of tool watches, model derivation, SFJ001P1 with the caliber 8A50 in the back of it. So this is the Panda variant. I chose this one because I thought it was not only the best looking of all of the different models from the range, it was also the most legible of all of the different models from the range. Important when you're main time register down there is somewhat smaller today. It should be noted though, it's not white on black, it is distinctly silver on black today. Not a complaint, just an observation. All right, we have got three big piston style pushers and a traditional crown down there at the 430. What does it do? Let's show the party piece straight away. One push to put it into mode, that puts it into chronograph mode, one press of the start pusher, check, that out. That is something a little bit special, I have to say. So what just happened then? Well, the main hour and minute hand reset as a single hand and reset to 12 o'clock. They will now count up in minutes. That second timer up there at 12 is now counting ticking seconds. We have 10th of a second timer over there at the 9.30, 10 o'clock, and we have one hundredth of a second being timed over there at the 2.30 to 3 o'clock. Now, I can of course press stop and it will time down too. So we've got 32.39 seconds. Start it up again. I believe this will run to one minute and then those two small registers will stop to save the battery life, though this is a solar chronograph, so perhaps they shouldn't have bothered with that one. And then it will continue ticking up the seconds and ticking up the minutes all the way around to 60 minutes. Let's hang on for 10 more seconds and see if that is indeed what happens. No, that is not what happens. That wasn't what I was expecting. This has now ticked over to one minute. Perhaps it'll run to two minutes. Let's wait for that and see if it happens then. Well, there you go. It happened 30 seconds later than I had anticipated. So it looks like it counts up all guns blazing to a minute and a half. And then it goes into this kind of 
preservation mode here. Uh, again, I can stop and it will give me the readout. So that's one minute and 47 and a half seconds with 0.54. Really very interesting. You don't see this all that often on chronographs. You certainly don't see it all that often when every hand has its own sub register rather than the main hands being in the center. Very unusual layout. It would definitely take some getting used to, but I can see the point in it. Okay, okay, I can see the sense in it. Whether it's attractive or not though, that remains to be seen. So now we've had a look at what the movement does, let's go back and have a look at the rest of the watch. That pretty much is what the movement does. Two modes, timekeeping and chronograph mode. Yeah, start, stop, you can start again. You can do split times as well. You can pick up where you left off, stop and reset, all down to one one hundredth of a second. Back into timekeeping mode there. If you wanna adjust the time, the home time, you oddly enough pull out the crown, mark adjust. That's a minute hand rather, we'll give a little twitch there to let you know it's in adjustment mode and you can scroll forwards or backwards as appropriate. Now it's not gonna be a quick watch to set because it doesn't do that thing where the, the minute hand just scrolls endlessly. It is gonna go backwards or forwards in little increments, but once you've set the time to the watch, reviewer's favorite time of day, seven minutes past 10, push the crown back in and that's you. Now in terms of dimensions, I think it is well proportioned for a chrono. I like my chronos to be 40 plus. This one is 41.8 mil across the middle. 12.8 mil thick with a lug to lug of 47.7. However, do note male end links, you can see those middle links do protrude a little bit. However, they do point down, so it's not too bad. Exactly 20 mil between the lugs. There's a bit of a taper down to 17 and a half and back up to exactly 20 mil for the clasp. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist, it weighs in at 145 grams. That's actually a really nice weight for a watch of this size. Perhaps the quartz movement isn't as heavy as autos, which is why a larger diameter dimension doesn't necessarily push the watch above 150 grams. 100 meters of water resistance from a push-pull crown. That is single dome sapphire. You can see some distortion at the edges of the viewing angle there. And as discussed, the movement is a Seiko in house caliber 8A50. One final sticker for us to peel then, the blue one protecting the case back. I'll peel that off to reveal a fairly simple Seiko standard stainless steel case back screw on, sapphire crystal, water resistance 100 meters, and made in China, of course. Case finish is very simple, mostly brushed apart from the high polished bezel. There's a circular brush to those upper lug surfaces and a fine horizontal brush to the mid case. Big piston style pushers, three of, unsigned crown on the other side today. To be honest, I'll let them off with that. It might have looked a little bit unusual. It looks a little bit unusual as it is having three of those pushers and then one mismatched crown. Perhaps it would have just looked even more unusual if they had signed it. Now, the bracelet. Not a lot of attempt as per usual by Seiko to get the bracelet to fit with the case, either in terms of brushing or in terms of the overall fit, to be honest. It's one of those kind of presidential oyster style, if you see what I mean. It's a three length style, but they're large, curved links, almost more like a present, so it's kind of somewhere in between. Now the clasp on this one, pressed upper milled scissor, very nicely curved milled scissor at the back, but only two holes of micro adjustment, one forward, one backwards. So yeah, as I said, it's not a hugely heavy watch, so you might get lucky. I think I've got reasonably lucky. Otherwise you would be craving for a half link and no half links are provided. All right, let's switch to the macro lens and have a look at the dial and hands up close and hey, why not? Let's pop it into chrono mode and let it do its thing again while we do so. It is a well-made dial. The dial layout though is gonna take some getting used to, I suspect. There's a vertical metallic brushing to that silver center section. All of those four sub registers are recessed into the dial itself. However, the three upper registers then have a raised border with a silver ring around it. And the main home time here also has a silver ring on it. So some nice details, but at the same time, they haven't overdone it. They've kept the color palette very simple, black, white, and silver, and they haven't overdone it in terms of markings and in terms of verbiage, just the Seiko brand logo and the Prospects X logo there. Start, stop, adjust, mode, and reset, split. 
advertising what the pushers and the crown do, one hundredth of a second chronograph, advertising what the watch does, and then one tenth of a second and one hundredth of a second, advertising what each of those two sub registers do. Yet yeah, that's what I was expecting the first time around. It stopped at the minute. Why didn't it do that the first time around? Who knows? On wrist, well, do you know what? Perhaps I am warming up to the sloth timer just a little bit. It actually wears rather nicely. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. As I said, I like a slightly larger chrono. I find it gives the dial more room to breathe. Although admittedly, this dial is a rather unusual layout. 13 mil is not slim. However, because it's quartz, the case back does sit quite flat. The bracelet is nicely tapered. It's got a reasonable weight to it and a reasonable balance to it. And they may be unusual, those dials, but at least they are symmetrical. Overhead, yeah, it looks all right. Those big piston pushers, one on each of the three corners at least. But the main time, the home time, surely the purpose of the watch, or at least what you're gonna be using it for the majority of the time, those hands are tiny. Effectively, you've bought a 42 mil watch with a 23, 24 mil dial on it. Yeah, it's like having a big man's watch on your wrist, but with a little lady's watch dial on the face of it instead. Moans and niggles, I know I've only just bought it and taken it out of the box, but I'm gonna complain about it already. Well, that price, 1350, madness Seiko, and you'd be mad to pay that much money for it. I paid half of that price and yeah, okay, it's not bad value, I suppose. The loom is not all that great though. Seiko's loomy bright, but only on the main time display. I guess you're not timing anything after dark. You're not gonna be telling the time much after dark though, to be honest. It's fairly dull initially and at the end of the 20 minute test, it's even duller. Oh, and it's tiny throughout. I feel like I've done okay in terms of sizing, but really there should be at least four holes of micro adjust here to give everybody a decent crack at getting a decent fit. Couple of niggles with the movement. In normal timekeeping mode, you don't have a tick in seconds hand. Why didn't they make that register at 12? A tick in second hand, I don't know. But one thing I did notice that I'll put back on the positives list, you can flip between modes and leave the stopwatch running. There you are, that one has been running for the last 30 seconds. I can then put it back into timekeeping mode. I can then switch it back into chronograph mode and it'll pick up where it left off. Okay, that's one point back for the movement. One point off, but one point back. And the final affordable elephant in the room, if you want to time down to one hundredth of a second, you can do it a lot more economically viably than with this Seiko. Your average cheap Casio, $20 Casio, will do just as well, thank you very much. But do you know what, perhaps I was being a little bit hard, a little bit cheeky about this Seiko. It actually wears nicely, there's a reasonable symmetry to the dial, and I'm sure one would get used to the rather unorthodox dial layout. Very, very small central hands though, so if your eyes aren't as sharp as they used to, go for one of the three handers. I don't think this one has sold in nearly the numbers that the Speed Timer did when it was launched, or relaunched I should say, a couple of years ago. Perhaps that's one of the reasons for that. So there you have it, not a watch I would describe as being conventionally attractive. It's definitely not conventional, and I'm still not sure it's even attractive, but it certainly does the job that it was designed for. And that's what matters, isn't it? If this one is all too much for you and you prefer your Seiko chronographs with three hands in the middle, you're okay now. Click here or click here. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I'll see you again in the next one.